Hello and welcome to Retail Business Financial Model Template. This tool returns the feasibility of your predicted business operations once the necessary inputs are given. The template is constructed of three parts. These are model inputs, report outputs and the dashboard itself. So let's start with the dashboard. Start with the model configuration over here. Choose your projection period that you would like to do your analysis from the drop-down menu. Determine your start date by inputting your date in day, month and year format. Type down your currency. You may hide the instructions once you get familiar with the template by choosing hide in the drop-down menu. To get a clear view, let's hide it for now. And lastly, type in your income tax rate and discounting rate. The discount rate will be used to find the present value of your future cash inflows. If you're not sure what to input, you may type down your bank saving deposit rate. So let's say 2%. Once you choose your projection period from here, the years and trends will be automatically set according to your choice. So, for example, let's say instead of 5 years, we've chosen 10. As you see, the additional years and sales trends appear. You can also edit and customize the sales trend. So, let's get back to our previous example. Let's make it 5 years and then you can edit your sales trend. For example, if you don't believe that you're going to perform on your first year, you may just call 50% for your merchandise sales trend, 40 for your services and 35 for manufactured goods. Later, type down the properties of each sector you're willing to enter. You don't have to fill in each sector if you're not going to be on that sector. Let's start with the merchandise properties. The category name how much profit you're willing to obtain from that product, how many days in average it takes you to pay suppliers for goods, how many days of sales shall be covered by stock of goods, and the percentage of goods which won't be sold to the customer because it is either stolen or damaged. On the manufactured goods, enter the category of product, its direct cost, days of inventory, credit period, and shrinkage and theft percentage. And lastly, on the services type, the category name and its direct cost. So let's give an example for three of those sectors. Once you're done with the settings, you can input your further presumptions. So let's start with the sale of merchandise. The products you entered on the dashboard can be listed in this section. Choose your product, type down your estimated daily average revenue on that product and the product that you supply may get affected by seasons. For example, let's say you expect a diminish in the sales of meat in summer by let's say 20%. So you have to input 80% to the summer months. If there are months that you go on discounts, you may also input that data into this table as well. So let's say, and let's say we're going to have 80% sales trending for the summer. And that's why we're going to have discounts on the summer period. You may get additional rows in this template by clicking on the plus button on the left. Please remember to input only white cells. The non-white cells, such as the grey cells on this table, are formulated and should not be intervened. Sales revenue forecast table shows your monthly revenues depending on the period and rate. Once adjusted, the numbers change accordingly. So let's say we're expecting a Samuel Lee 
2% increase. Once you set it, you're going to see that your product's revenue is go are going to increase similarly 2% on the stable. On the cost sales forecast, it is the same logic, only it shows your cost of goods sold each month. Determine the period and the rate and the table will adjust, adjust itself automatically. Merchandise inventory forecast calculates the value of your stocks in each product by month. Merchandise purchase forecast calculates the value of the goods you purchased during that month. Payments to suppliers forecast calculates the price you have to pay to your suppliers depending on the days of credit you determine on the dashboard. Now let's carry on with the product providing services. This section also works just like the sale of merchandise section. Type down your product, its estimated daily average revenue, sales trends and discounts. So let's say for this example we're not going to have any seasonal sales trends and seasonal discounts. Just like in the previous sheet, you may get to set the periods and the rates and also the, pre the periods and the rates and the cost of sales forecast as well. Now let's carry on with the sale of manufactured goods. This sheet also works exactly as the sale of merchandise sheet. Choose your product, your daily revenue, and also seasonal sales trends and seasonal discounts. Set your revenue and cost increase and you will be able to see the results on this page again. On the fixed cost and salaries, list your stuff by title, their salary and the number of employees for each month. So, let's give an example for this. On this table, list your other fixed monthly expenses per month. So let's say, insurance. You don't have to fill each cell in this section. Only fill in the cells that you're going to pay an expense. So let's say we're going to pay our first insurance expenses on January and then our next payment will be on the next year January so you may fill in the cells just like this you may dynamically set the salary evolution from here it's the same way you organize your cost increase in the previous sheet while this table shows the salary cost of each title the table under it shows the total salaries to be paid in that month. So let's say we're expecting an annually 1% increase and as you see the salaries change dynamically according to the settings we just adjusted. On the startup costs, list down the expenditures which are made before opening your hotel and their equivalent cost. On the Fixed assets section, enter the amounts of money you're going to invest in your fixed asset as part of the startup cost. On the first table, input the tangible products that you invested in such as like cars, van, equipment or property. On the second table, input the intangible products that you invested in such as software, license, patent, permits. The two tables below show the monthly depreciated and amortized amounts for that asset. The last two tables below show the cumulative residual value of the asset month by month. On the financing and tax profit section, 
input your equity and loans if you have any. Equity contribution is the money you contribute to the business if you're an owner or if you're a core investor. Profit distribution uh, is the payout to the owner uh, expected to be made out of net profit and equity repayment is the initial investment that you, that you withdraw from the business. On the loan table, input the properties of your loans. It's loan term, annual interest rate, the repayment schedule. You can actually set the repayment schedule from the drop-down menu and its payment frequency. If you set any of the loans repayment schedule as manual, that loan's manual entry will be available on the table below. As you see, the cells are colored with white instead of grey. Once you input the properties on the loan repayments calculated, you can see what to pay in each month. On this case, we're going to pay 20,000 on May 2019 and 30,000 on May 2020. And the loan that we obtain in here is 50%. So we're going to be able to see the transactions under the tables below. On the loan outstanding balances, you're able to see your outstanding loan balances. On the table below, you may see the interest in each month that you that the loan generated. And lastly, under the profit and cash flow sections, you may track your money with the given inputs much easier. The data source is the sheet that contains all your given matched inputs. This sheet is used while constructing the reports in model outputs. So we do not recommend you to edit this sheet at all. We have completed the model inputs. Now we may look into the model outputs. So let's start with the monthly financial statements. Once you complete inputting your data, press the update reports button to refresh the pivot table. If you change anything on the data, please don't forget to update the reports immediately. This section shows the monthly income statement, balance sheet and cash flow statement of your company. On the yearly financial statements, you may see the yearly income statement, balance sheet and cash flow statement. On the profit sections, the process between your sales revenue to your earnings before interest and taxes and adds depreciation and amortization to find the EBITDA. You may click on the negative sign and plus sign to group and ungroup the pivot table. The operating cash flow will show you your monthly net operating cash flow. Revenue details section shows the detailed monthly revenue report which indicates the generated total revenue from each product or service. Gross profit breakdown will show you the gross profit of each business type including the figures for sales revenue and cost of goods sold for each product and services. Gross profit report will illustrate your gross profit breakdown report and indicate the gross profit percentage for each source of income. You may set the time frames from the filters to see the results of a specific time range. So let's say you would like to observe the 2019 and 2020. 
between the months February and March, let's say. As you see, the template has been settled once you adjusted the filters. On the break-even analysis, it shows you the cumulative pro profit from the very beginning to the end of your projection period with the main datas which form the profit below. The real purpose of this report is to figure out when could the cumulative profit and all the costs equalize each other. So, in this example, it gets into a profit in the first quarter of 2021. On the inventory balances at costs, it shows you the stock value of each product you keep for each quarter. The account payable details shows the quarterly cost for each product or services. The outstanding loans table, as the name states, it indicates the outstanding balance of each loan for each quarter. Working capital section shows the working capital figures and working capital ratios for each quarter and it shows in the graphic. If the current liabilities exceeds the current assets, the chart has been set to prepare the ratio bar as red and if not, then green. The profitability metrics show the return on investment and return on total assets ratio for each quarter on the chart with the necessary data on below. Debt to equity shows the debt equity and debt to equity ratio for each quarter on the chart. On the NPV and IRR calculator, you will see the graph of the cumulative net discounted cash flow for each quarter and net present value and internal rate of return of this project. And lastly, on NPV and IRR investor perspective, you'll see the graph of cumulative investor discounted cash flow and NPV and IRR figures on the below, just like, just like on the previous page. So, thanks for watching and don't forget to check our other templates at www.someka.net. Dot net.